Hello everybody, I'm Dimebot. Welcome to Battlefleet Gothic Armada. It's another Warhammer game. For whatever reason, 2016 really seems to be the year of Warhammer games. Not that I'm complaining, I love Warhammer. So, as you can see on the screen right now, this is a beta version. It's a work in progress. It's a little limited. Uh, we are not going to jump into the campaign mode, uh, because I don't want to spoil the story in this game, because from what I've played, it's actually pretty well written and it's got some neat elements. I will cover those in more detail once the game comes out. Suffice it to say, it's got some really cool ideas going on in there, and I've really enjoyed what I've played so far. Instead, what we're going to do is just play a couple solo skirmishes. So, let's first off hop into the options menu. So, we've got all manner of resolutions. You can change your window type between full screen windowed and windowed full screen. You have your general settings, so low, medium, high, epic are the presets, and then you can go custom and change whatever you want resolution scale. Texture, anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadows, view distance. A couple little niggles here and there. It doesn't tell you what the anti-aliasing is. I'm assuming from looking at the game, it's FXAA. Uh, post-processing doesn't really tell us what that's doing either. Is it ambient occlusion? Is it something else? Uh, there's really no motion, motion blur in this game to speak of, so that doesn't bug me that much. View distance, this may be something you want to turn up or down based on your machine. For me, it's not really a problem to keep it on Epic, but if you find that you're running into frame rate issues, I'd drop it down a couple because the map does a pretty decent job, the mini-map, of showing you what's around, and that can make a big difference given the scale of this game's maps. Check out the audio, so you've got a general sound effects, music, and voices. You can mute anyone you want, turn on subtitles for the voices. I love this. The game's got some good music. It's got some pretty fun voice acting, although some of the lines get a little old. Uh, you can change your gamma. And controls, so you've got your general controls, ship controls, and skills. For whatever reason, these are not bindable right now. I'm really hoping that that's different in the uh, final version. I would assume it would be, because this is basically an RTS, so you kind of want rebindable keys. Let's hop into a solo skirmish and figure out what this game is all about. So, right now you can play three different factions. The Imperial Navy, Fleets of Chaos, and the Orc Pirates. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. So as you can see down here, the Imperial Navy has a Nova Cannon, strong prow armor, a lot of their ships can use torpedoes, they're not very effective at long range, and they're slow. Fleets of Chaos, they are traitors, basically. Uh, they have long range ships, they're faster, they've got a ton of launch base for things like boarding, They've got low damage macro cannons, which is a main weapon in this part of the Warhammer universe. Not a lot of torpedoes and no heavy armor. The orcs, well, all the ships are customizable, every last one of them, and that's a big deal in this game. They're very tough. They're really strong at assault actions. They're also more likely to disobey. They have poor maneuverability and poor accuracy range. Now, the more likely to disobey thing is actually a pretty big deal. I uh, was playing with the Imperial Navy and actually got into a bad situation and had one of my ship's captains freak out and try to activate his warp drive and leave and a little mini event played out and I ended up shooting him in the head because he was trying to mute me so fuck that guy but for the purposes of this let's jump in with the Imperial Navy first so you do have a persistent admiral they do level up you gain different abilities perks and things you can put on your ship so there's a lot of customization. We'll spend a little time in that because it is pretty deep. So right here, you can see my ship. This is a light cruiser. There are cruisers and battle cruisers as well. I have not quite unlocked them yet. I have been playing for a while, but I haven't ranked up far enough because, quite frankly, I kind of suck at this game. So let's take a look at the Dauntless here. So we can see our stats here. We can see our hull integrity, our shields, our speed, our rotation. I'll explain that when we get in game, but rotating, actually controlling and turning your ship makes a huge deal in this game because as you can see, you have a lot of broadside weapons, but you also have your front torpedoes. So there's a lot of strategy to this game, similar to something like naval action where you have to be aware of broadsides and raking shots. This game has that. It's just in space. Your detection range, your troop value, there's tool tips for all of these. You have your turrets, how many are on the ship. Each turret is going to raise troop value by 1%, but only against boardings, etc. So, and then your armor. So, front, side, and back. Now, a couple interesting things in here. If it reaches 15% of its value, the ship is heavily damaged on hull and target. You need to read these tooltips. Some of this stuff is not well explained. For example, when we get into game, I'll show you if you lose a certain deck then certain abilities are disabled it makes sense it's just not explained right off the bat 
So we here have our Prowl Torpedo Launcher. They're armor piercing. Uh, they are really hard to stop, but they can be stopped. You have your Macro Cannon. This is a primary weapon. These things are awesome. You're going to see them a lot. And your Light Macro Battery. This is my broadside. So let's take a look at our upgrades. So you have customizable upgrades for each part of the room in each part of the room each part of the ship let's try that again engine generator deck hull and weaponry right now i have the additional void shield generator on which gives my line ship which is the cruiser 100 points in the shield 100 more points in the shields and the escort shield is going to get 50 points so that would be this one of these frigates down here destroyer or frigate you also have things such as the belt armor, the first critical damage inflicted to a system, is ignored. You also have things like turbo weaponry. The range of all macro weapons in the ship are increased by 3,000 units. This is really cool because you can completely fit out a ship to suit your style. For skills, you have supercharged void shield. These go on active cooldown when you use them. It's The interface is going to look very similar to anybody that's played StarCraft. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. I have this ship running Taunt. The target of the ship is uncontrollable and attacking the ship at close range for 15 seconds. It's a great way to close the gap and put your enemy in a horrible situation. you notice I have my other ship running the same thing. They also are running the torpedoes. Now, here we have a Firestorm Frigate. Now, I haven't taken this one into combat, so it doesn't have a lot of upgrades, but it has a very different uh, front armament. It's got a light... <clears throat> excuse me. Light Prowl Lance. So, enemy's armor is reduced to a minimal value. This is a really cool weapon. So, lances are awesome. They look like big energy shots going off. They're extremely hard to miss. Uh, it only has a 90 degree firing arc on the front of the ship, though. And then it's got its double macro turrets. This is a lightly armed ship. It's made for getting in and out. You notice up here I have this thing called Renown. So, this is going to dictate what ships I can buy, what upgrades I have access to. Let's head back over to favors. So as you level up, you can get favor bonuses from the Inquisition, the Adeptus Mechanus, Mechanicus, the Adeptus Astartes, and the Imperial Navy. So different factions within the Warhammer universe, and they all do unique things. So you'll see that this one is going to cost me 200 renown if I wanted it, which I can't get yet. So the Emperor's Tarot, the designated enemy ship signal, is identified. This will let me auto-identify a ship, basically. Inquisitional sweet inquis ugh, inquisitorial sweet. Every crew member gets one free crew point, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Adeptus Mechanus, let's say we did that. The ship gains one skill slot. That could be really powerful. Omnissiah gives plus one upgrade slot to the ship. Let's take a look at the Imperial Navy. Reinforcement, a Cobra class escort ship enters the battlefield as reinforcement. These are really powerful ships. Or ships. Really powerful items. That's why they cost so much. As for your crew, you can upgrade your crew, and the more you upgrade them, the better they're going to do. So I've upgraded my Master Gunner here. Now you can also recondition your crew and reset everything. So tons and tons and tons of customization in this. You can even rename the ships when you buy them. So let's hop into a battle and take a look at this. Now, the actual campaign has a galaxy map you can move around on and do things, but let's talk about what we got right here. So I've got 250 fleet points. Now, you notice my two ships here. These cost 109 points apiece. Now, I want to take the Sacred Defiance with us. We've got 141 points left, so we can either take that and not be able to take any escort ships, or we could take a couple escort ships. Now, I prefer to take my two cruisers right now until I can up my fleet points, but for right now, I think we're going to take... A couple line ships so let's take a firestorm frigate that and that so we're going to take a small armada in and let's hop in now one of the things you'll notice is that this is a very nice looking game it doesn't look quite like the trailers but no game ever does that was also the loading screen it loads extremely quick so here we get to deploy our ships now, our goal here is to destroy a certain number of ships in a cruiser clash, so what I'm going to do is arrange my fleet. Alright, we're ready to deploy. 
Now, I can control ship each ship ready. individually by left-clicking and then right-clicking to have them move. Or, I can do that. Now, I can double-click to focus in on the ship, pan the camera with my middle mouse button, and get right up close and personal with them as they Changing course. move through space. Some of the lighting effects and everything are really, really good. Now, Awaiting orders. those are some mines over there. We need to avoid those, probably. You'll notice down here in the minimap, there's a little red dot. That's an enemy ship. You may also be wondering at these icons. So let's pause the game a second. Actually, we can't. Let's Activating go into the tactical, the tactical cogitator, which will let me slow down the game. So you can tell each individual, each individual ship to broadside engage from what range and with what broadside or frontal engage. So if you remember what I said about these cruisers and everything, command. they... Underway. Let's get everybody to stop right here. They yes, should Admiral. probably attack from the front with their lances. So, this ship is macro cannons, so we want them to broadside engage from short range because macro cannons have a short range. So that's our sword class frigate. Your orders. For this ship, this is our Cobra Destroyer. Cobra Destroyer is armed with the Prowl Light Torpedo Launcher. We want them to engage from medium range frontal. Your orders. This ship is our Firestorm Frigate. Remember, they have the Lance. We also want them to engage from medium range frontal. And this ship, we want to engage broadside, either or, from close range because of the macro cannons. Orders so, received. lots and lots. Oh boy, we need to... Ship ready. Oh, screwed that up. Cruising speed set. Right. That was not good. That just completely cost us a ship because I'm an idiot. Oh, no matter. We'll continue in the combat. Now, what I tried to do was Engines make, hot. make my ship turn quicker yes, by clicking on the engines over here. You can full stop. You can go to... Or burn retros, rather. You can go at cruising speed, full speed, or you can hit a high energy turn and turn your ship quickly. And we are being attacked already. Understood. Let's get in there and get to grips with them. Enemy ship sighted. We are the Imperial so I'm going to have everybody attack them and hit my tactical cogitator tactical and slow cogitator. down. Now, I want this ship to execute a burn, and I want to hit my torpedoes. I hit them a little too early there. Your orders. I'm going to have these ships lock on. That's going to have them... Uh, that's going to raise the accuracy of the ship by 20%. So, one other thing that we can do is taunt the ship and really mess them up. We just lost our escort ship, though. So we're doing very poorly in this battle. This game requires a lot of micromanagement. Resuming normal functions. Now what I'm going to do here is hit a lightning strike on this ship. And it failed, because their shields just popped back up. A lightning strike allows me to teleport a squad of elite marines onto the ship. Well, and uh, space marines are there. And, uh, yeah. Fuck their shit up, basically. That was a lance, you just saw it. So, there's a lot of complexity in these battles. There's a lot to micromanage. It could be a lot to take in, and that may be something that hurts the game. There's a lot going on here. Let's check on our other. Ship over here. You need to be attacking front on. There's that lance. Unfortunately, this ship has almost got its shields back up, and one of my batteries has been destroyed. One other thing we can do, and I should have been doing it, is have this ship set as priority one, and have its generator set as priority one. Have this ship set as priority two, and its generator as priority two. There's a lot you can do to customize what your ships do when you're not directly controlling them. We're going to hit that higher energy turn. We've lost our torpedoes, however. We've got this guy caught between us, however, that's not very good for our cruiser. Engaging. Come on. 
This is actually good for us, though. We've got our ship running broadside to theirs. Except that was a lightning strike. Ship ready. But this cruiser does not want to keep Understood. up. Which is weird. So one thing I've noticed is sometimes you'll think you've ordered the ship into combat and it will just, will just stop out in the middle of nowhere for no reason. But beta is beta. So what do I think about the game so far? I love the complexity of it, if you hadn't noticed. Let's see if we can get this guy's shields down. I love the complexity. I love the tactical flexibility. There's a lot going on, though. Let's see if we can board. We'll see the boarding pods go right there. You can get in nice and close. Boarding failure. Let's go ahead and lock on target there. We're gonna resuming normal function. Lock on target with that one as well. Target locked in. And battles can take a while, especially once you get to some larger fleets. Gorgeous. I may show off the orcs here in a few minutes. Uh, this is really a super fun game to play. I, I can't emphasize enough how much fun I've been having with the uh, with the campaign so far. I do have my issues with it. It doesn't run as well as I would like it to sometimes. This particular game seems to be running okay, but I've noticed when you get four or five ships on the screen at the same time, the frame rate can go to hell sometimes. And, as I said, I've been a StarCraft player for a long time. Not a high-level StarCraft player, but a StarCraft player. So I'm more or less used to this kind of micromanagement. Oh, well, we have a fire on board we need to repair. Whereas, if it's not something you're used to, this game can be incredibly overwhelming. The activation of the tactical cogitators to let you slow down the battle when you need to time key moments is amazing. And there's something that just feels really good about timing a perfect turn to come around behind your enemy and just absolutely break them up the stern with your broadside. It just feels great. Let's taunt this ship. Uh-oh, they lightning striked me. So you'll notice that you see these little damage indicators popping up over my ship. We've had a deck destroyed and we've basically lost most of our skills, so the smart thing to do here would be to warp the hell out. And we're actually going to do that. I'm actually going to capitulate. I don't know. I'm lost in the warp for one turn and can't get near now. Ugh. So there's a punishment to keep you from bugging out. Now that ship we're going to lose. <clears throat> However, we got out with our line ship, so that's fine. Targeting enemy vessel. This Firestorm frigate is hosed, however. Well, come on, finish me off. Jeez, guys. Target locked in. Now you notice that they were doing damage to shields. There are some weapons that completely ignore shields. So that was a defeat. Mainly because I made an incredibly stupid mistake at the beginning. So now you see we'll earn renown. Not much. Not much at all. But we did go up a level, so... Uh, that's a good thing. We unlocked a new cruiser slot. We can have 300 points per cruiser class missions. Or we've unlocked those. So let's actually take a look at some new mission types then. Um, let's see if we can add a ship. Hmm. So what can we add here? Tyrant, Hall Integrity 800, Turrets 12... So it's really going to come down to the Nova Cannon. Yes, please. I'll I'll take a Nova Cannon. Let's... Did it add? What? There it is. Oh, my. Oh, that's pretty. All right. We can upgrade some skills here. Let's go with... Hmm. Let's go with that. And... 
You can see there's a lot of really cool ones here. Um, let's go with that. And there we go. So we're using up renown, but it's okay. Let's go to a battle. Yes, please. Yes, please. And yes, please. This is probably going to end horribly. I don't care. My god, that ship is pretty. Oh my god, these guys have done a great job recreating the um, Imperial Navy. Now, you may be saying, well, all these Imperial Navy ships look the same. Yeah, they should. That's kind of how the Imperial Navy built them. You can see here, the uh, these are clearly Orc ships. They look great as well. Let's out of the play. See what it does. Ship ready. Yes, Admiral. Let's get moving. You see these red dots out here are going to be the enemy ships. Now, there's some elements of tactical complexity you can do here. I can hide in this gas cloud, and it will conceal me, and I can wait in ambush. Setting course. Now, let's go ahead and... Awaiting orders. We want you to fight at close range. You... That's your command. Engines hot. On the other hand, we want you to fight... We want you to fight broadside as well. Ship ready. And we want you to fight head on at long range. Awaiting orders. Those are missiles. We're going to try orders to dodge. Now you see what I meant about the draw distance earlier. If you're running into frame rate problems, turn it down. You won't be able to see quite so much of the map. But underway. Now we are taking hull damage from those asteroids. So course plotted. All in all, I suck at this game, but... Awaiting orders. Oh, God. We're going to lose that ship, because it's just being eaten alive by asteroids I can't even see. Enemy ship sighted. Changing course. Yeah, we're going to lose that ship. God, I'm terrible. Your orders. But what we can do here is turn and as we turn we're going to boom torpedoes Helm coordinates acknowledged. there goes a disruptor bomb resuming normal functions Oh, that's going to suck for you, dude. And as you cross into my boarding range... Yes, Admiral. Understood. Let's make a radical turn so that we don't get caught in the same asteroid field yes, that screwed Admiral. our other ship. Taught him turn back. Oh, they're going to ram. Cruising speed set. So ramming is 100% a thing in this game. Ready. Targeting enemy vessel. Awaiting orders. Setting course. Ah. This is a very sloppily fought engagement, but Target locked in. it's getting the job done. Let's get rid of their shield generators. Your orders. Awaiting orders. So yeah, incredibly fun game. I, it's a huge rush to get a new ship. Acquiring new vector. 
and there's nothing quite like timing, as I said, that moment right there. Perfectly. Your orders. I'm watching that broadside and those torpedoes just rip someone apart. Let's pull up beside this guy. Oh! Orders received. He warped out. Awaiting orders. Enemy ship sighted. Your orders. Your priority one. Because you're a transport ship. Ship ready. Hmm. Let's see, that doesn't count as them being destroyed. That counts as them ramming me, which is awful. However, we should be able to disruption bomb this. At your command. Oh my god. Orcs. Fucking orcs, man. Uh, when you slow it down, the game is gorgeous. I hate orcs. And I think they just got the uh, Sacred Defiance. Sure, what's going on with my other cruiser there? Oh, it's lost everything. It's time to get it out. Reloading. Let's supercharge our void shield for a second. My god, this is just brutal. Escaping the battle zone. Cruising speed set. Damn, I hit that too early. Coordinates acknowledged. This is not going well. I never claim to be good at this game, though. Target locked in. It's really satisfying to play, though. I can't wait for it to come out. So, guys, this uh oh, it's time to go. Looks like the kind of thing you might be interested in. It is, like I said. Oh my God. Freaking orcs! Anyways, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by that orc. It's coming out. Uh, I'll check on the date and put it in the description below, but it's a lot of fun so far. Like I said, there's some issues, especially if you're not good at a lot of multitasking. Like, even worse than me at multitasking. But it's still a fun game. It's got a lot to recommend it. And, yeah, give it a look, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button. Please subscribe. If you disliked it because you're a horrible space orc and you wanted me to get boarded and ramp some more, well, I can't wait to find you with a bolter, but feel free to do what you want. My name is Dimebot. I'll see you next time. Like what you saw? Click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Or click on one of these other videos.